Okay guys, so welcome back to episode 3. So in this in this episode we will be creating our monster and make him chase the player around the maze. So let's start off by create the monster scene. Make him a kinematic body. Rename him to monster. Give him a collision shape. And as well a mesh instance. <clears throat> Give him a capsule mesh, rotate it on the x-axis and for the collision shape give it a capsule shape as well and you need to rotate this 90 degrees on the x-axis as well. Okay so select both of these and just oh, hit snap mode as well and just Or you know what? Remove snap mode. <laughs> and just make the origin on the bottom of the, the mesh. Uh, we should actually... We should lower the radius as well. So something like 0 0.65 maybe. The same goes for the collision. And mark those two again and lower it to make the origin at the bottom of the mesh something like that okay so let's just save this guy for now on the source monster perfect so what we need to do now is to uh, change up some things so in the tiles head into tiles uh, the scene and remove the previous uh, floor floor tile that we created and create a new one mesh instance give it a plane mesh and rename it to floor and under this button here mesh hit create navigation mesh okay and don't mind the warning here it will go away later on so we can give the floor a spatial material as well and just change the color to let's say some reddish and hit save and convert this back to mesh library but do not override this one create a new one save it to a new one instead so tiles new dot mesh lib and you can remove the old mesh library uh, let's remove the whole level scene as well because we will create a new one anyways so uh, create a new scene a spatial as a root call it level and save this as level again uh, create a navigation with a navigation mesh instance and a grid map so level navigation navigation mesh instance and a grid map and assign the mesh library to the grid map. So hit view and remove the grid. And let's paint out a simple maze for now. So let's hit orthogonal view. Oops. And just create a small maze. Something like that, maybe and paint out the floor as well and hit back head back to um, perspective whoops and let's instantiate the player as well as the mob or the monster uh, Let's get the grid back and let's hit snap mode and just move the monster so place him inside and inside a maze and at level one as well so his feet is at the bottom of the floor and as well goes and same goes for the player just move the player in just raise him up so his feet is on the on the floor as well 
And before I forget, in the player script, uh, go into line 67 for me and just comment this out because we won't be using any. Uh, you can remove the whole line. We won't be using any gravity in the game. And hit save. So, back in the level. When this is done, we can just try and run it. Let's select a newly level, newly created level. Perfect. Let's run around and let's. Yeah. So here's the here's the monster. Perfect. So let's head in back to the monster script uh, to the monster scene and give it a script. We can remove the comments. And now we will do some fun stuff. So we will have to declare some uh, some constants and some variables at the top. So const speed because this will be the movement speed. For the monster, let's say 2.0 for now, you can change it up, this up later on. We need a target, and this will of course be the player. And we need a reference to the navigation uh, node. So we need a reference to this, this navigation. Uh, and we also need a velocity to be able to move. Okay? So, in the physics process, uh, first we check if target equals no. We don't have any target, we can just return. And to ease up some things, just declare this to be a navigation. So, the, so that the editor can autocomplete some function calls for us. So, uh, we need a path to the player. Get path to, so this is a method that we will create soon. Um, and we will get the path to target dot his global position. So, global position we get from global transform dot origin. And if path dot size is greater than zero, we will move along path. We can provide a path to that function as well. Okay, so we now we have two uh, two functions that we need to to um, uh, to create. So func get path to a target and func move along path all right so let's start off by this one Okay, so this function will only return a, um, a, a simple path from global transform.origin to target, okay? So uh, this is a function called in the navigation, so we can have a look at that. Uh, get simple path returns a uh, pool vector 3 array with all the points that the monster will go through to uh, uh, all the way to the target okay so uh, move along path we can have a quick little check if path dot size is less than or equal to zero we just return because we don't have a path to move along uh, so the first target will be at the first index of the array. We have to check if we are really close to uh, to this point, to, to the target. We remove this element from the array. To, uh, so in the next iteration of this, uh, of this function call, a new target will be our, be our next target. So if global transform.origin distance to whoops, target is less than or equal to or less than 0 0.1, we just remove it path.remove uh, the first array, the, or sorry, the first index in the array. Then we set velocity to target minus translation. We normalize this. Normalized 
times the speed. So this just sets the direction to, uh, to the target times our movement speed. We then call move and slide with the velocity. Okay, so I think that is it. I think so. Uh, so we need two setters as well. So func set target. We need a function to set the target. So self dot target equals target. Same for the nav. So set nav nav self dot nav equals nav. And that is it. So in the level, let's create a new script for the level. In the ready function, we just call monster dot, or actually we should do something like this. On ready var monster equals on ready var player equals and on ready var nav equals. So monster dot set nav nav monster dot set target player simple as that uh, we can try and we need to do one more thing I, I just forgot it so in the monster script or well, the first element in the array will always be at the at the monster's position so we need to um, we need to before we retrieve the target we just hit path dot remove remove okay so let's just try and run this and see if everything works and it does not so first off we need to make that a function call let's see if he's chasing us and look at that, okay? So he is chasing us, and that is awesome. Okay, so let's make him uh, at least notify when he when he's in, in range of the player. So let's create an area and give it a collision shape. Whoops. Um, it can be a capsule shape as well. Rotate it. And just move it up. So, so something like that. Maybe, maybe we can lower the radius to something like that. Yeah, I think. So when, so in, so this is the area or the hitbox that the monster will be able to hit the player. So this area under collision. Ah, first off, we need to go into a project, product settings, and under. Uh, 3D physics. Let's create some layer names. So layer 3 can be the player, and layer 4 can be the monster. So, um, so the monster should be at monster. So he is the monster, he is in monster layer. And he will be interacting with layer 1 and player. So layer 1 we should actually rename that as well to something like uh, let's say grid or something. And for the player he will be a... Whoops! We'd... Actually we do not want the area to be able to interact with the grid. So remove that. And the area should not be a monster as well but the kinematic body should be a monster and interact with the grid okay so for the player he will will be a player and he will be interacting with monster and the grid okay and I think that is that. So let's connect a signal. 
var area. We should rename that to something like uh, hitbox. Hit hit uh, hitbox area. Var hitbox equals hitbox area. And let's override the ready function. Whoops, on ready var hitbox dot connect uh, body entered self on uh, hit player. Let's create a function so funk body. Okay, so let's call uh, print we just slammed the f out of body dot name let's see if it works oof we just slammed the f out of player perfect okay so in the next episode we will be uh, creating some world environment and just make the game look a little bit more scarier than it does right now. But until then, peace out!